Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance, where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe, and then hit the little bell icon right up the subscribe button, and it'll notify you of any new videos when they're released for you. This one I'm extracting from a much longer video to show you the sound the air conditioner compressor makes when it's having a hard time to start, so you can head it off and prevent problems. Sound should start dropping behind that mountain. That'll help. Right now, it's just blazing out. <laughs> and once it once it drops a little more, all of a sudden the temperature will drop quite a bit. Nice palm springs. Nice day. All things considered, nice day. It's been a crazy day or a crazy week. I broke my phone last Friday. And so that made for a crazy week. I don't know if they didn't do that. You know, where all of a sudden all your contacts and everything that you had was, was gone if you hadn't saved it. Crazy. Uh, uh, I tried a new phone, but I ended up going with a different phone. So. I did bring in some comparison videos on the phones. So again, I'm going to go ahead and plug it and, and uh, try again. Uh, pull the disconnect. Reconnect our wiring. We just charge the capacitor first. And again, that capacitor gets recharged. So, And then I can connect my red run wire. And then the yellow start wire. Alright. Wow, uh, here another unit with a compressor. Having trouble to start. No, I'm just hearing a vibration here. <laughs> All right. Huh. Okay. Ooh, the sun dropped. Look, what a difference. It ju the temperature just dropped by maybe five, 10 degrees. All right, well, that'll help. I'll plug it in. Here goes, we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the mix. Nice and cold, nice and chilly right now. We're gonna have to wait about five minutes to see. And that other unit that I was hearing, it is the compressor. You hear it? It's trying to start, and it's not started. Yikes, got that one going and now this one's down. Probably a good thing I'm here. <laughs> oh my gosh. You hear it? Sound of the compressor trying to start. We're gonna have to pull it and check it. It's getting warmer. Uh oh. We're like just a little low on Freon. Ay, ay, ay. Let me go see if this other unit started. I may need to go get my Freon anyway, and I'll need to get another capacitor. Oh, it started nice and cold. I'm still going to check that capacitor. It did start though. And that's the sound of a unit that's trying to start, and I've noticed my units need a hard start kit. They benefit from it. So I'm going to pull this, and we're going to see if it has a hard start kit for one. And then I can check the, the 
uh, good deal. Give you the live test, 2650. Yeah, no hard set yet. Look, and my units definitely just benefit. And it looks like a bigger capacitor. I think that's a 45 slash 5. I hate how they turn these where you can't read them. I don't want to pull it either because it actually turned out to be a 40 slash 5. Got to loosen it a bit more. All right. Here we go to this unit. Still running. It's nice and chilly. The sound of the unit when it when it's not running how it sounds when the compressor is not starting and it's trying to start and it could indi indicate a weak capacitor. It also could just need a hard start get. My units benefit from a hard start get. The, the compressor winds up starting much easier and over time, my, in my opinion, that that initial start, that initial torque takes takes its toll. So I'm gonna go ahead and discharge the capacitor on this one. And uh, this one's for you, my friend. All right. There we go. All right. Pull the disconnect. Okay. And we'll discharge the capacitor. And that capacitor holds the charge even after the power is disconnected, so we'll bridge the leads. Go. Here's the commons. Start. Sorry for the poor camera positioning on this one. You guys have seen me do this a lot of times, yeah, though. I still felt it was valuable enough to show yeah, in, in the video. Uh, it's the test. It may not be clear. bad, but it, my thought is it's most likely that the end is how it was just sitting there trying to start. Okay, Harmon and Herm, or actually I'm not sure. <laughs> I think that might have been common and Fan, but it's 3.9 and that's weak. And then here's Common and Herm. And that's 14.36 and that's weak. So yep, we got a weak capacitor. It was the right call to change this puppy out. Okay, um, we're definitely going to need to shift this deal over. I believe it's going to be the second to the last hole. Let's see if I can get you guys to Okay. There we go. Position it so we can read it. This one, Herm is here, fan is here. So the fan's the brown one. Before I do that, I can show you the reading on the capacitor. Microfarad test. Let's see, common and fan. This is a 40 slash 5, and that's good. And then common and herm. There is definitely debate about the hard start kits, but it's totally my opinion and my experience that they benefit and that they do a lot better with a hard start kit, even installed right from the get go. With that brand new unit that the compressor won't start, and then I add the hard start kit, and they do just fine. So it's been my experience.
All right, we're in. And now our hard start kit. One leaf goes to common, one leaf goes to perm. Okay, and I like to use the jumpered one for common. Single one for perm. I kind of, on these, when I'm putting terminals on, I like to leave the spaded portion out because it's easier to remove it in the future. If you put it this way, it's, it's much harder to get a screwdriver under there. This way it just seems to have a little more body on that front edge. It makes it easier in the future to remove them. This is a little quick tech tip. That's how I like to do it. Not, somebody may have different recommendations, but to me, that would be my tech tip on making life easier for the next tech in the future because you see how you can really get the screwdriver under there so much easier than, than the other little thin portion. So that's my opinion there. All right, we're ready to run. And the compressor, it's been about five minutes, so which is good. It's allowed to, if it was faster, if I was too fast, I might want to wait until it's had five minutes for the pressures to equalize. We don't want the compressor to try to start in an unequalized state then it might blow a fuse, might trip the breaker. Anyway, we're ready to see how we start. Come back and check our unit here. We're nice and cold. All right. Okay. Put my cover back on. That'll be that. I didn't like how when I plugged the disconnect in, I kind of misconnected it. I, you know, sometimes it, if that happens, sometimes I'll just wait another five minutes before. Um, but, you know, in a perfect world, like I often say, we don't live in a perfect world. Cold. It's like some old trash up here left up here. I'm gonna get, get rid of this up here. All right. Just make things better if you can, a little bit at a time. Do what you can. Yep. So got a ton more videos to be bringing to you and sharing to you. I got a ton of footage to edit from different things that happened. Um, from I had an air conditioner frozen on the roof. I had another unit that was low on Freon. Uh, I had a different refrigerant leaks and, and different trying to track things down. So we're going to be sharing those videos with you as well. So be on the lookout for more Kung Fu maintenance coming soon. Welcome to this world.